part 2 of this Light Bite series on horticulture LED lighting. In this part, titled Lighting in Greenhouses, we will discuss the current status of LED lighting in greenhouses and how it adds value for growers in business case calculations as well as promoting plant growth in vegetables, fruits and flowers. Hello there, thanks for watching Philips Lighting University Light Bite. This is presented by Ries Neuteboom. I'm working as a key account manager for Philips Horticultural LED Solutions and in my day-to-day -day job I help growers with their lighting plans, lighting solutions and what light spectra is optimum for their crop. In the next 10 minutes or so I'm going to explain more about what we think of a greenhouse, what lighting solutions can bring for the growers and what lighting applications we have in place and and how they can achieve the goals and the objectives of the grower. Lighting in horticulture. To start off, I would like to begin with an overview of what Philips has done in horticulture so far. It started in 1936 when Philips first started its research with neon lights on plants. In 2000, in 2000 it was actually that they introduced the green power high pressure sodium lamp uh, which is now used as the most common lamp in horticulture. In 2005 we made adjustments to that and came up with an electronic system. In 2007 when LEDs uh, became more interesting we started the research of using LED and different light spectra in horticulture. From 2007 until 2016 nowadays we have accomplished hundreds of commercial horticultural projects across the globe and work on close relationships with research institutes and knowledge institutes. I'd shortly like to explain what my definition of a greenhouse will be. To me, a greenhouse is a glass house where we can control the environment and adjust it according to what the plant needs in order to grow optimum. Every plant grows optimum under a certain kind of temperature with a certain kind of humidity. But also light is an important factor for growth for plants. And in a greenhouse, this light always comes from the sun. This makes the grower very depending upon what light it receives from the sun. And as you can imagine, it will be difficult to grow tomatoes in winter time in the Netherlands because of the little radiation you have. That is one of the reasons why some growers use artificial lighting to create year-round production. I would now like to show a video of a grower Leo van der Haag who grows pot roses in the Netherlands and explains about this lighting solution where he combines high pressure sodium with LEDs. Deze planten die staan nu uh, morgen dan worden ze ingepakt. En dan gaan ze worden eigenlijk over de hele wereld worden ze gewoon uh, verzonden. Sommige planten willen ze heel rijp hebben, sommige willen ze iets rauwer hebben. Ja, dat is gewoon, uh, zo, zo is het gewoon mooi. Zo kunnen we hem uh, inpakken en, uh, en verkopen. Ja, wij onderscheiden ons door uh, het hele jaar rond een perfecte potroost te produceren. Het kweken van het rozen zit gewoon uh, in mijn bloed. Toen ik 21 was heb ik een kwekerij van mijn vader overgenomen en uh, dat was een snijrozen kwekerij. Inmiddels hebben we een uh, potrozen kwekerij en we maken zo'n uh, 5 miljoen potrozen per jaar. Ja, wie had dat ooit kunnen geloven? Dat had ik zelf ook niet kunnen geloven destijds. Om jou rond een perfecte potroos uh, te kweken moet je gewoon alle elementen gewoon goed in handen hebben. We, hebben eigenlijk, we kunnen eigenlijk alles sturen. Het uh, water kunnen we sturen, het klimaat kunnen we sturen, de beluchting kunnen we sturen. En natuurlijk ook het licht. Het licht heeft gewoon een ware revolutie ondergaan. Vroeger was het alleen aan en uit. Tegenwoordig kunnen we met ledverlichting kunnen we de kleuren kiezen. We kunnen dan een kwalitatief betere plant maken. En tevens zijn we veel duurzamer bezig doordat we 10% minder energie nodig hebben in deze kwekerij. Met die ledverlichting kun je gewoon de kleur kiezen die het best bij je plant past. Ja, we nemen een beetje extra blauw licht om de plant compact te krijgen ja, en dat, dat gaat gewoon perfect. En daar willen we eigenlijk in de toekomst naartoe. Zoveel mogelijk je teelt kunnen sturen. 
Het vergt nogal wat vertrouwen om ja, zoveel te investeren om voorop te kunnen lopen. Duurzame onderneming staat heel hoog in het vaandel bij ons. We moeten gewoon met minder energie uitkomen in de toekomst. En LED is daar gewoon een onderdeel van. Je kan gewoon 10% minder energie gebruiken in deze kwekerij. En we maken nog steeds een perfecte potroos. En dat is gewoon de toekomst. Nou, het eindresultaat mag er zijn. We hebben gewoon een hele mooie roos. We hebben ruim voldoende knoppen. Hij is compact. Hij is, ja, gewoon, het is gewoon een perfecte roos. Zo wil, wil ik gewoon mijn hele kwekerij uh, erbij hebben staan. Here you meet the two brothers, Danny and Bart, of the company Wimsico. They grow cut roses in Belgium and just recently installed a new lighting system. They replaced their old by new high pressure sodiums with LEDs. By replacing their old system, they wanted to increase the light intensity within the same electricity capacity they had available at their company. By using more efficient lamp, they have now 40% more light available for their crops. Because 50% of the light intensity comes from LED lighting, they have less heat they bring into their greenhouse and therefore are able to control the climate in a better way. This would also mean that they have to ventilate less and therefore less CO2 goes to waste. This all will result in better quality roses and better use of their energy. Now here's an example of how tomatoes are grown in greenhouses in the Netherlands. This typical system we call high wire. And the reason we call it this way is because they are grown on a string. The string is wired across the stem and goes all the way to the top of the greenhouses where it hangs to a cable. And as the plant grows in height, every now and then they lower the crop and therefore change the position of the fruits. This makes it easier for the workers to, get the, to harvest the fruits and get them off as you see in the picture. A norm, in a normal greenhouse with the artificial lighting, tomatoes are being planted in the beginning of January and start being harvested in somewhere in March. The reason for this planting date is because this way you grow together with the increased light level of the sun. But when you start using artificial lighting, you can earlier your plant day date to let's say October and be in production around Christmas time. This way a Dutch grower can produce high quality tomatoes during winter time. In this particular picture you will see a lighting system when you look on top of high pressure sodium and LED interlightings in between the canopy. By having explained how a tomato plant is being grown in greenhouses you now know that it grows its new leaves on top of the plant. These leaves are being used to a certain kind of radiation they got from the sun or artificial lighting. Now as the plant is being lowered, these leaves are going more down and down into the crop and have less radiation available. But they still want to have the same radiation as they had before and therefore they increase their leaf surface to get more light. As you can imagine, this process costs a lot of energy to the plant. And this energy will not go into the fruits. So by only providing light from on top of the plant, too little light goes in between the canopy, which causes less healthier plants and less production. That is one of the reasons why growers in the Nordic countries start using low wattage high pressure sodium lamps and place them in between the canopy. This is not an ideal situation due to the heat it produces and therefore in 2008-2009 the first LED interlighting was introduced. An LED provides less radiation heat and is therefore more suitable to place in between the canopy. 
This has resulted that in 2012 the first commercial greenhouse was installed with the LED interlighting in between. From this point on many projects across the globe have been realized in countries such as the Netherlands, Belgium, France, Finland, UK, Germany, China, Japan and Canada. What we can say now is that thanks to the dedicated light recipe and the positioning of the LED interlighting, the LED interlighting produce one and a half times more tomatoes compared to only lighting it from on top. Every crop requires a different sum of light in order to produce optimum. So when a grower wants to put artificial lighting in its greenhouse, we need to know the exact location of the greenhouse in order to, to find out what the natural light sum is and know how much artificial light we have to, we have to add to that. By having defined the optimum light sum, we then can think of the light strategy, meaning how much light do we want to have from on top, how much light do we want to give in between the canopy. Now this slide shows our strategy for LED interlighting and basically it says we, has, and we have a single line and we have a double line. These lines we can make adjustable as well, so as the plant grows over the season we can adjust the interlight according to the plant height. As we now know more about how tomatoes are being grown and you've already listened to a Dutch tomato grower, I would now like to introduce you to the company Holt from the UK who will tell you more about their experiences with LED interlighting. The market's changing. Our customers are demanding uh, tomatoes all year round, not solely from imported fruit. Uh, because of the carbon footprint issue and the fact that we're looking at more sustainable ways of growing, for which reason uh, we're now producing in the winter. However, we don't have the knowledge at present to, to do this. So now, now's the time that we're making a change. Growers are looking at ways to produce during the winter. We at the Holtz have been exploring the possibility of winter crops for many years. Uh, this lighted solution means that we can produce really tasteful tomatoes, even in December. The roots are growing here within this plastic gully. There's no uh, substrate use, and it flow, the water and nutrients flow by gravity to a drain in the middle of the row down there. The plants take what nutrients they want. If they don't want it, it gets recycled round and round. So uh, it's very efficient on water and nutrients. One of the advantages with the Philips interlighting is we can hang the lights within the canopy, and we can also target that part of the canopy. So what we're finding is that we can leave leaf on the plant longer because it's still working, it's still photosynthesizing, so it's still productive. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's still active, so it's, yeah. it's developing still. Yeah, I, I like the look of it. Yeah, I think yeah. it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. We're now producing our winter crop. The two varieties are Elegance and Piccolo. Piccolo, you can see it's a nice uniform size and shape, nicely even color. And the same for Elegance, it's consistent size, consistent fruit which is exactly what our customers want. It's a really tasteful tomato, and this is partly down to the hybrid system. It gives us this ability to produce even fruit size and consistent quality all year round. To give you an idea of the possibilities of growing tomatoes under full LED, I would like to share the, the results that have been accomplished at Green Q Improvement Center in Blijswijk, the Netherlands because there we have accomplished to grow more than 100 kilo per square meter. Now to put that into perspective, a grower without artificial lighting usually produces around 62 between 70 kilos with natural daylight. Now what are the differences between HPS and LED top lighting? We've briefly gone over this already. But one of the major differences is that the HPS lamp produces a lot of radiation heat. For 100% of the energy you put in, 50% of that comes in radiation heat and only 34% in, 
in light. Now compare this to an LED top lighting, only 15% comes in radiation heat, 35% in convectional heat and 50% is being transferred into light, which is the reason why you put this energy in through your module anyway. With the LED revolution, we have the possibility to decide what light colors or spectras we actually put into the lamp and therefore are able to make a dedicated light recipe for different kind of crops. In general, you see a combination of low percentage blue light and the rest with deep red in the spectrum of 660 nanometers. Because LEDs produce less radiation heat, it is possible to use your lighting system longer over the year. Think about spring, when outside temperatures start to rise. Normally it is not possible to use your HPS system because else it gets too warm in the greenhouse. Now with LED you are still able to provide extra light to your plants without increasing the plant temperature. Another advantage is that you can use LED lights in lower greenhouses whereas it's not possible with HPS due to the uniformity but also too much heat being produced on top of the plant. Here we see a lettuce grower from Belgium, De Smet, who grows lettuce. When he wanted to expand its greenhouse by one and a half hectares, he decided not to put HPS in place, but choose for a solution of LED lighting. He actually installed double the light intensity that he first thought was possible with HPS. Lettuce is a cold crop and therefore radiation heat can cause tip burn. By using double the light intensity he was used to, with LED lighting he is now able to grow more crops during winter time with even better quality standards. Also strawberries can be grown in the greenhouses. Here we see a company called Brookberries who grow in the south of the Netherlands, strawberries year-round. Now in order to elongate on the branches once the strawberry plant comes out of its cold period, you need to use photoperiodic lighting. Normally they did this by the incandescent lamp. As the incandescent lamp is very inefficient and is not be available for the European market anymore, they had to look for new alternatives. An LED and LED is their solution. Now they reduced upon energy savings by 88% and even improved their elongation. With new technology, new opportunities are being created. This is what Delicious shows. They grow their own young plants now in a multi-layer application. Instead of using only one layer, they build up a system of seven layers, which now increase their surface to grow. Within these climate cells they are able to control everything, also the radiation and are not being dependent upon the sun anymore. Therefore they know exactly what time it will take in order to have their young plants ready to tra being transported into the greenhouse. Now the next chapter will be about city farming working in climate cells and combining all the modern technology available. More on city farming in part 3 of this Lightbite series on horticultural LED lighting. Thanks for listening.